And we're back for more late night gaming. Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Case 4. December 26th, 9.44 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Karma. That's right, Manfred von Karma. He's the best prosecutor there is. He hasn't lost a case in his 40-year career. He is a god of prosecution, right? A god. Not a single case? He'll do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. Hmm. Sounds like someone else I know, Edgeworth. Hmm. <laughs> you don't understand. I mean, he'll really do anything. Manfred von Karma is a man to be feared. That's quite a claim coming from someone who forges evidence. He taught me what it really means to prosecute. But what? Just picture a prosecutor as vicious as me, multiplied by a factor of ten. Ugh. So... So was he your teacher then, Mr. Edgeworth? Mm, something like that. And now he's trying to get you found guilty. What a creep! Oh, wait! Maybe he's planning on losing on purpose to help you out! Not a chance. He hasn't lost once in 40 years. 40 goddamn years. He's as ruthless as me, times 20. You know, your math uh, keeps changing there, buddy. That's pretty ruthless. Like I said, he's a god among prosecutors. I guess that's something like Mia was to me. Speaking of Mia... Um, Maya? Uh-huh. We could really be using Mia's help right about now, don't you think? Oh. I can't. Sorry, I tried... I really, really tried, but I couldn't reach. You couldn't reach? I think it's because I haven't been training. Well, to the waterfall with you. My powers are weak again. Oh man, what bad timing. No more burgers for you. I'm really sorry. I'll try my best. I hope so. What are you whispering about? Oh, oh, uh, nothing. It's nothing. Well, it's time. Let's head in. Into court. Uh, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number three. Rubble, 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 clack. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Mm. Um, Mr. Von Karma, is the prosecution ready? Fool. You seriously think that I would stand here were I not completely prepared? Uh, right, my apologies. He's even got the judge scared. Very well, your opening statement, please. Decisive evidence. A decisive witness. What else could possibly be required? Uh, nothing, of course. That should be fine. The prosecution may call its first witness. What's with this guy? Is he royalty or something? How am I supposed to fight against this? I call the detective in charge of this case, Detective Dick Gumshoe. Okay, Gumshoe's first. Let's see how this goes. Describe the incident now. Uh, y yes, sir. Detective Gumshoe looks nervous. Uh, please take a look at the map. The murder happened late Christmas Eve, around midnight. There was one boat in the very middle of the lake. That doesn't look like the very middle to me. Anyway, there were two men on the boat. Now, there happened to be a woman camping here on the edge of the lake. At 12.10 a.m., she heard two pistol shots. Then the boat started to move. It went toward the boat rental shop. Hmm. Overhead map added to the court record. Testify to the court about the arrest now. 
Oh, uh, wait, Mr. Von Karma? Yes. Actually, I'm the one who, that's supposed to be handling these proceedings. Wrong. There is only one thing you need to do here. You will slam down your gavel and say the word guilty. That is your role. Uh, yeah, yes, of course. You're, you're quite right. No, he's not. The arrest of Mr. Edgeworth. A man called into the station around 30 minutes after midnight. We headed to the scene of the crime as fast as we could. That's where we found Mr. Edgeworth. Now, I didn't suspect him or of anything at all. But the next morning, a body was found in the lake. So we had to arrest Mr. Edgeworth. Hmm, I see. Very well. Begin your cross-examination, attorney. Now. Okay. A uh, man called in at the station around 30 minutes. Any idea who it was? You received a call from a man? Or, uh, yep. Yep. But you said there was a woman camping there. She was the one who heard the two gunshots, right? Objection. That woman and the man who called into called in the report are two different people, obviously. Different people? There were two witnesses. Ugh. Their testimonies were quite similar, however. Today I've summoned the woman who was camping. The woman who was camping. A lot of heart. What happened next, detective? We headed to the scene of the crime as fast as we could. Okay, hold it. How long was it between receiving the report and your arrival at the lake? Uh, well, I'd say it was about three minutes. That's pretty fast. Our motto for the month is get there quick. That's also your motto with your girlfriend. Uh, detective, you will refrain from casually revealing department secrets. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. I look forward to your next year's salary review. So much to look forward to these days. This is no time for dejected daydreaming. Continue. Yes, sir. That's where we found Mr. Edgeworth. Okay, hold on. What was Mr. Edgeworth like when you saw him, then? Well... From what I saw, he looked pretty relaxed. Not like a murderer at all, really. Detective, the court requires the facts, not your opinion. How many years have you been on the force? Facts only, Detective. Hard, cold, objective facts. Y yes sir Man, he's got his share of objections. Now, I didn't suspect him of anything at all. Okay, hold on. Why didn't you think he was suspicious? You should know. We have a deep, trusting relationship with the prosecutors. Detective, the court isn't interested in your musings. Deep thr uh, trust <laughs> of poppycock. <laughs> I've never heard of so many flippant comments from an active detective on the boss. Uh, <clears throat> detective comes to <laughs> so good. <clears throat> Continue now. But the next morning the body was found in the lake. Okay, hold on. Did you find any clues on the body? A single bullet was recovered from the body. Okay, now we're getting to it. He was shot through the heart, and you're to blame. I mean, uh, shot through the heart fatally. Judge, here's the bullet. And I object to Bon Jovi references. Uh, it didn't strike bone, but its shape is well... It didn't strike bone, so its shape is well preserved. Very well, the court accepts the bullet into evidence. Wait a minute, it, it penetrated his heart, and it didn't strike bone. How... On Earth, I, I, I don't know. Pistol bullet added to the court record. 
So we had to arrest Mr. Edgeworth. Hold it. Why is that? Well, we found the murder weapon in the boat. The murder weapon? A pistol. Detective Gumshoe, that is a vital piece of information. Please revise your testimony. Right. S sorry, Your Honor. The murder weapon we found in the boat was decisive evidence. Hold it. What about the pistol made it decisive evidence? <laughs> Ech, he has the same evil laugh as Edgeworth. There were fingerprints on the pistol found in the boat. They were clear prints from Mr. Edgeworth's right hand. What? Rubble, 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 clack. Order, order! So, Mr. Edgeworth's fingerprints were found on the murder weapon. I yes, Your Honor. Judge, this is the weapon in question. Uh, accepted into evidence. Pistol added to the court record. Murder weapon, 22 caliber. Fired three times. There's prints from Edgeworth's right hand. Okay, um... I was kind of curious as to why there were two shots, but this says it was fired three times. Strange. <coughs> Members of the court, we now have the pistol in... in the... We now have the pistol used in the murder and the bullet found in the body. Detective. Y yes, sir. Was the bullet found in the body fired from the pistol? Yes, the ballistic markings on the bullet match the pistol. Hmm. Hey, Nick, what does he mean, ballistic markings? Shocking. To imagine someone here does not know something as basic as ballistic markings. Nick, he's glaring at me. Very well, I'll explain. Actually, Judge, you do it. Uh, me? Um, uh, ahem. Ballistic markings are like the fingerprints of a gun. The barrel leaves distinctive marks on each bullet it fires. You can examine these ballistic fingerprints to see which gun fired the shot. It's quite accurate. Indeed. This leads to one inevitable conclusion. The bullet found in the victim's heart was, without a doubt, fired from this pistol. This pistol, which, as you may recall, was covered with the defendant's own fingerprints. <laughs> Clack. Order! Order! This is bad. This makes it look like Edgeworth did it. Well, Judge? I'd say it's almost decisive, yes. Honestly, I could declare a verdict at this time. However... You wish to hear the witness speak, no doubt. Very well. I am somewhat fatigued, and so I will take a brief break. I will call my witness after the recess, which will last ten minutes. Judge. Y yes? What are you doing? A ten-minute recess. Now. But, uh, wait, I... Just bang your flimsy gavel and get on with it, man. Y yes! Clack. Ahem, this court will take a ten-minute recess. Who's running this court, anyway? 11.09 a.m. Dependent lobby number two. Edgeworth, what's going on here? Your fingerprints were on the murder weapon? Why do we not know that until just now? Uh, hmm... And that foggy photo makes one thing clear. The only one who could have shot the man was the person in the photo. True. Was that you in the boat? Yes, it was me. But what? But you must believe me, I didn't shoot him. Th then who did? I don't know. You don't know? Weren't you right there? I heard a gunshot from very close by. Then. The other man fell from the boat. I can't say why, but I thought at the time that he had shot himself. You mean it was a suicide? That's the only explanation I could come up with. 
Huh. How am I going to convince anyone of that? Say, Maya. Huh? What? what, what? Any progress, progress with Mia? Oh. Sorry. It's no good. Mm. I know. I'm no good for anything, am I, Nick? If I can't call my sister, I might as well not be here, right? <laughs> yeah, you're useless. Uh, I don't know what that's going to do. I don't want to get a game over, so... No, I need you here. Of course not. I need you. I can see you're always trying to help. Even if you don't actually help, it's the thought that counts, right? It's okay, Nick. You don't have to make me feel better. I don't know anything about trials or defense. What's more, I'm a spirit medium who can't even contact spirits. That's because we're all frauds. Uh, everyone has their off days. I mean, I've just been l getting lucky lately. But you never know when my luck is going to run out. R really? Whoa, 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 right. Don't jinx this case any more than it already is. It's bad for my heart. Oh, oh, sorry. Whoops. Clack. Court is back in session. Mr. Von Karma, call your witness. Yes. Will Miss Lataha take the stand? Lata Hart, you are a research student at a university. That I am. Good. Begin by telling us what you saw the night of the instant. And don't add anything trivial or subjective. Understand? Y'all need to learn some manners. Understand? It, yeah, I understand. I understand. All right, well, very well. Your testimony, testimony, please. Witnesses account. It was Christmas Eve, just after midnight, I reckon. We were gonna let it all hang out. Uh, I was in my car. I heard this bang come up from the lake. When I looked out the window, I saw two gents in a boat. Then there was another bang. <laughs> mm. There wasn't, there wasn't nary a thing on the lake but that boat. Enough. Huh? Judge, she happened to take a photo of the incident. This is that photo. Accept it as evidence. Uh, well, uh, this is a surprise. This looks like uh, the very moment of the murder. Clack. Clack, clack, clack. Order, order. I will remove people from this court if I do, do not have order immediately. As the witness testified, she looked at the lake when she heard the shot. There were no other boats on that lake. So the man in the boat with the victim must have been the one who shot him. Yes. It was the defendant, Miles Edgeworth. Clack, clack, clack. Order, order, order! I will have order. Well, Judge? The evidence is decisive. I have very little doubt about this case. Clack. Very well, this court finds the defendant. Oh, whoa, 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 wait a minute, Your Honor. I haven't cross-examined the witness yet. A cross-examination? We have photographic proof. What question can there possibly be? This photo is worth a thousand words, and they all read guilty. You lose. Or do you claim to have found a contradiction in her testimony? Hmm. Very well. If you have to, you may cross-examine the witness. You will only flounder and ask meaningless questions. You will fail to find anything. And then I will have you held in contempt of court. Uh, Nick? Contempt? Contempt of court? Contempt of court, you know. I guess I understand. But what are you going to do? Do you really think there was a contradiction with the facts and her testimony? Right. 
I think I noticed one little thing. Wow, I'm impressed, Nick. I didn't notice anything. All right, let's take him on. Y yeah. I got a bad feeling about this. I understand. I will cross-examine the witness. Very well. I pray for your sake this isn't a waste of time. Witness account. Right, it was Christmas Eve, uh, just after midnight. Just after midnight, you say? In other words, it was no longer Christmas Eve, but Christmas Day. Huh? Uh, yeah, well, yes. Objection. I know you want to find contradictions, but really... Mm. I hope your next contradiction is a little more relevant to the trial. Witness, continue, continue your testimony. I was in my car. I turned on the radio. Uh, why were you camping there anyway? I'm a research student at my university. I was taking pictures to use in my research. What research? This is all... This all sounds suspicious. Press further. Miss Hart, could you be more specific about your research? <laughs> what does the witness's motive have in camping? What does the witness's motive in camping by the lake have to do with this case? The answer is nothing. I object to this line of questioning. Objection sustained. Well, wait, now, I'm the one who says that. Well, then say it already. Objection sustained. Thanks for nothing, Your Honor. I heard this bang come up from the lake. You, uh, so you weren't looking at the lake at the time. Nope. I looked after I heard that noise. She said that already. I ask you to find uh, contradictions. Not leisurely chat with the witness. Ugh. When I looked out the window, I saw two gents in a boat. Could you clearly see the two men? Just look at the picture. Clear enough for you? Uh-oh. Wait a second. I wasn't asking you about the photo. I was asking if you saw the two men. Uh, yeah, well, of course. The witness has testified that she saw them. There's also a photo. You'd best look somewhere for your... You'd best look elsewhere for your precious contradictions. He jumped in quick. He's hiding something. There was another bang. Were you watching the very moment the shot rang out? Well, yeah, sure. You're asking meaningless questions. Meaningless contradictions, Mr. Wright. Not meaningless babble. Don Karma, I think I hate you. He's trying to keep me from talking to the witness. To what end? There was an area thing on the lake about that boat. Are you sure about that? Yeah, sure as a country gal can be. That sounds pretty sure. Press further. How come you're so sure? Well, heck, I scanned the whole lake. Scanned the whole lake. Almost sounds like she was more interested in the lake than the boat. Miss Hart, you... Mr. Wright, the witness has answered the question in full. <clears throat> no need for further questions. Objection sustained. Oh, uh, that's what I'm... Uh, sustained? Y yes of course. Oh, great. Clack. Enough. I think we've heard all we need to hear, Mr. Wright. It seems you are unable to find a contradiction in the testimony worth noting. But, but, Your Honor... You keep your promise. Mr. Wright, I'm... I am afraid that I will have to penalize any further outbursts by holding you in contempt of court. And if that happens, you will have to leave the courtroom immediately. Understood? Uh, uh-huh. Nick? 
Not his testimony is fishy, Nick. Real fishy. I, I, I know what you mean, but if I can't say anything, what can I do? Clack. I believe we've covered the evidence sufficiently to make a decision. Then pass your judgment. Very well. Mr. Miles Edgeworth, please take the stand. Hold it. Oh, uh, who was that? It was me. Maya. It, is something wrong? Do, do you need to use the facilities? <laughs> no, no, I don't. Do, do you need to take a dump? A lot of heart. Your testimony stinks. It's unclear whether you were actually looking at the lake. It's highly doubtful that you actually saw Mr. Edgeworth. Tell us the truth. This is a matter of life or death. Lada, did you really clearly see Mr. Edgeworth that night? Did you see him fire that pistol? Clack. You will stand down. The court does not recognize, does not acknowledge the defense's outburst. Answer me, Lada. What's the big idea treat me like some kind of criminal? I saw him. I swear it. I saw Edgeworth. Enough. Judge, declare the defense in contempt of court. Y yes, uh, yes, of course. I'm sorry, but you were warned. Guard, escort Mr. Wright out of the courtroom. He is in contempt of court and must leave. No. No. Wait. I, I was the one who made the outburst, Your Honor. Nick is innocent. Ha! What's the difference? All that remains is for the guilt is for the guilty verdict verdict. Oh my god, talking. Yeah. All that remains is for the guilty verdict to be declared. Isn't that right, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Wrong. What? Did you hear what Miss Hart just said? She said she clearly saw Mr. Edgeworth. That was not in the testimony. That changes her testimony, and I have a right to cross-examine her again. Rubble, rubble, rubble. Clack, clack, clack. Order, 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 order. You're in contempt of, of court. It's too late for wild claims. I have nothing but contempt for this court. Judge sustained my objection. I'm sorry, Mr. Von Karma, but I cannot. What? Miss Lotta Hart has made her a new testimony. The defense does have a right to cross-examine her again. But he is in contempt of court. No, I am. If you're going to arrest someone, arrest me. Hmm. Very well. Maya Fay, you will leave the courtroom immediately. Nick, I did what I could. You have to do the rest. Good luck. But Maya... Clack. I care not for this melodrama. Listen well, Mr. Fe <coughs> Mr. Phoenix Wright. I do not tolerate badgering of my witness. I'm running out of time. I'd better find a contradiction in here or else. Mr. Wright, begin your cross-examination. I saw it clear as day. The man on the boat was Mr. Edgeworth. Well, if I can't press, then the cue is that I have to present evidence, so. Oh, clear as day. But this photo is anything but clear. So let's, it's gotta be it. Yes, gotcha. Gotcha, Miss Hart, finally. What, what? You got what? Look at the. <clears throat> Look at this photograph. Shut up. The photo I took. The very same. There's something I want you to see in this photo. It's quite clearly visible. The fog, Miss Hart. So, so this picture was taken with professional, high-quality film, correct? Yet even it could not capture the faces of the men on the boat. 
Yet you claim you saw Mr. Edgeworth. How? Well, uh, what? Well, Mr. Wright has a point. Objection. Uh, that's why I told her not to say that in her testimony. Please. Yet now she has said it, Mr. Von Karma. How could you possibly see Mr. Edgeworth? Explain yourself. Miss Hart? What? Could you see the defendant that night? Uh, of course. I said I could, and I meant I could. Then please testify as to the circumstances of your sighting. I did it. I finally found a hole in Von Karma's carefully vague testimony. You're right. It was a cold night, and the fog was thick as grits. So once I... Fi I once I was finished setting up my camera, and I got back to the car... Wait a minute. Uh, I think I read that wrong. Oh, well, we'll, we'll pick it up on uh, recross examination. Uh, still, I brought my binoculars with me. When I heard that noise out on the lake, I looked with my binoculars. See? No problem. Hmm. You use binoculars? Very well. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. This one had better be good. You're right. It was a cold night, and the mist was thick as grits. So, how could you see Mr. Edgeworth? Now, just hold on. Just hold your horses for a second. You hasty Yankee types would never find a gal where I'm from. Defense attorneys have trouble with that as it is. Nobody loves me. So once I was finished setting up my camera, I got back in the car. Your camera? Yeah, it's got an automatic. The issue we are concerned with here is Miss Hart seeing Mr. Edgeworth. The camera has nothing to do with all this. Objection sustained. Ugh, he's not letting her answer any of my questions. Still, I brought my binoculars with me. Binoculars? Yeah, binoculars. Yesterday, you mentioned that you were out looking for shooting stars, correct? Well, yeah. Actually, they're meteors. Are they meteorites? See, shooting star is just a turn of phrase. Uh... Stars are too big to fall. Or, uh, never mind. Wouldn't you need a telescope and not binoculars for that? Ugh. I've got doubts about your camera, too. Was that really to take pictures of meteor showers? The camera is irrelevant to this case. You can't say that for certain. Hmm, Mr. Wright, is the camera really relevant to this case? If you believe it is, you may continue with this line of questioning. But know this. If you find nothing with this, there will be consequences. Well, Mr. Wright, do you wish to press further about the camera? Press further. This this is make it or break it time. The camera is of utmost importance, Your Honor. It is, perhaps, the key to this entire case. Therefore, I will continue my line of questioning. Wow, maybe I went a little overboard there. Clack. Very well. Miss Hart, you will testify to the court about the camera. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. The camera was set up to take pictures of a meteor shower. Hold it. Miss Hart, what made you choose that lake to take photo to take photograph uh what am I what am I reading? What made you choose the lake to photograph meteors? You know, the fog gets thick on that lake. It's not very suited for stargazing. Yeah, well, you see, I, I, I guess I wasn't thinking too straight, Har. <laughs> Mr. Wright, I will not have you badgering my witness because of her challenged intellect. Now, wait a minute. Continue with, with your testimony. You were saying how it was... How it was that you saw Mr. Edgeworth. Ah. Uh. No unnecessary comments, please. When I heard that noise out on the lake, I looked with my binoculars. 
there was a heavy fog. How, how would binoculars change that at all? What do you mean? Even binoculars can't see through fog. But you say you clearly saw him. Er, uh, I did, yeah. Enough. There is no room for doubt in her testimony. Hmm. She sounded pretty doubtful to me. I have to find a clear contradiction first. I don't care how many, many Von Karmic uh, objections I get. I'm going to find a hole in this testimony if it's the last thing I do. Uh, let's see. Camera was set up to take pictures of a meteor shower. Wait a minute. Loud noises. Meteor showers don't typically make noises. Unless they're falling right on you. Uh, I think this is it? Plus it's facing the lake, it even says so. Yes! You were photographing shooting stars? That's a lie. So, says who? I saw the camera you set up yesterday. It was pointed directly at the lake. You have to point a camera upward to take photos of the stars, Miss Hart. I told you that's just a turn of phrase. They were meteors. Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? The witness was not at the lake to photograph shooting stars, Your Honor. Well then, what exactly was she photographing? Your Honor, take a look at this. What was Miss Hart trying to photograph at the lake? It was Gordy. Take that. Miss Hart, this is what you were trying to photograph. What is this? A newspaper article? Gordy? Ah, oh, the sighting at Gord Lake. Well, Miss Hart, I, I never heard of no lake monster. You got proof or something? Let's see you prove that I was down at the lake trying to photograph this Gordy. I have it. Proof. Hmm. Intriguing. Very well. Let's see it. And no joking around this time, please. What is, uh, what is proof that the witness was trying to photograph Gordy, the lake monster? Well, the fact that it was pointed... I mean, this picture shows that it's pointed right at the lake. Take that. Here's my proof. It's simple. If it's simple, then why have you obviously made an error, Mr. Wright? Oh, come on! What's that? Go home. Consider a career change. Ugh. How can they so casually toss aside this evidence? Oh, whoops. Wrong evidence. Luckily for you, I'm in a patient mood, Mr. Wright. One more time, please. What is proof that the witness was trying to photograph Gordy the lake monster? I guess it's the... Uh... Oh, right, because it was programmed uh, for loud noises. So that's what it's going to be. The proof, Miss Hart, is your own camera. Your camera was set to take photos in response to loud noises, correct? Thus, this photograph here, taken when the gun... Uh, when a gun fired on the lake. And here, this article about Gordy. According to this article, Gordy made a loud noise when it emerged. Well? You were trying to photograph Gordy, weren't you? That's why you had to set your camera to respond to loud noises. Order! Order! I see. I too thought it was a little strange. Yeah, sure. Well, Miss Hart? You were camping there to try and take a photo of Gordy, weren't you? Yeah. Not bad. Are all you lawyers that smart? So smart, boy. I was down there trying to photograph Gordy. You got me. So what? Huh? That don't change what I saw, does it? Exactly. What you just used several precious minutes of our time to prove is nothing more than that the witness is an idiot who thinks monsters exist. Oh, hey! So, uh, 
But as she so succinctly said, so what? It changes nothing. Not true. You were hiding the whole thing about Gordy for some reason. I know it. What could it have been? Whatever it is, I'm getting to the bottom of this. Miss Hart, why did you hide the fact that you were searching for Gordy for, uh, from the court? Please revise your testimony. Right. Fine. I'll testify. It won't change nothing, though. Something will change. It has to. And I'm going to spot it. Actually, I'm not a research student at a university. I'm an investigative photographer. Imagine what a scoop it'd be if I got a picture of that monster. That's why I was camping out by the lake. But that's all I was hiding. When I heard the bang, I looked right straight out at the lake. There wasn't much else to look at, so I just watched that boat the whole time. Then I saw a flash near one of the man's hands, and I heard another gunshot. I was looking right at that boat the whole time, cross my heart and hope to fry. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. The witness's testimony is unchanged from before. Whether she is a research student or photographer has no bearing on this case. There is no need to waste more of our time with another pointless cross-examination. Or, uh, hmm. Objection. I claim the defense is right to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. Von Karma's up to something, I know it. He doesn't want me to cross-examine her. Because, why? Was there a contradiction? Very well, you may begin the cross-examination. You seem sure of yourself, you must have something in mind. Ha! That would be a first. <laughs> Very funny. You understand that this is your last chance at a cross-examination, Mr. Wright. If there is no problem with the testimony this time, we will let the witness leave. I will announce my verdict at that time, Mr. Wright. Understood? Yes, Your Honor. All right. I'm not a research student, investigative photographer. Imagine what a scoop would be if I got a picture of that monster. While I was camping out by the lake. I heard the bang, I looked straight out at the lake. There wasn't much else to look at, so I just watched the boat the whole time. I don't think so. I'm just going to chance, I guess, and say that this is the contradiction. So... Because she was clearly not there for the boat, she was there for the lake monster, so... Yes! Miss Hart, were you really looking at that boat? Well, what's with you? Of course I was looking at it. It was the only thing out there. Any normal person would be looking at it. I agree, any normal person would. But you are far from normal. What, what? Y'all want to step over here and say that? City slicker saying pop instead of sody? You were camping at that lake. Uh, you were camping at the lake to take a picture of Gordy. Think about it. What would you do if you heard a loud noise? You'd be scanning the lake for any sign of Gordy, that's what. You wouldn't give the boat a second thought. Rubble, 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 clack. Order, continue, Mr. Wright. You testify that you were watching the boat through binoculars. However, you wouldn't need binoculars to watch that boat. You needed them to search for Gordy, and that's what you were doing. Well, hmm. Well, now that y'all mention it, I did sort of take my binoculars and kind of scan the lake a bit. I mean, Gordy might be out there and all. But Miss Hart, are, are you saying that you were not watching the boat then? 
so sorry, y'all. I wasn't fibbing, really. I was just... I thought, you know, I could be witness to a murder and all. I kind of got excited. I was sure I was watching that boat until now. This... This is totally uncalled for. But, but hey... Y'all got the photograph. You got proof. Hmm. Still, we can't see who was shooting who in this. Right, right. That's why I took this photo and... Witness, that's enough. You have had a long day. Shut your pie hole. Sh shut my what? What was she going to say? She took the photo. And what? Wait a second. She even had a photograph to prove it. But you really can't tell from the photograph who is shooting. That's why she said she's going to enlarge the photo. She said it'll drop the quality of might, but should let us see who's who. Ah, she enlarged that photo. Why won't Von Karma let her show it? I've got a hunch. I bet that enlarged photo shows something bad for Von Karma. This is my chance. If I'm wrong, though, it'll mean prison for Edgeworth, or worse. What should I do? Make her show the enlargement, of course. Miss Hart, look at this... F Shut up. You enlarged this photograph, did you not? Y yeah, I did. Why has that enlargement not been presented to the court? Because it does not exist. What are y'all talking about? You were the ones who told me not to show it in court in the first place, you old fool. Clack, clack, clack. What's the meaning of this, Mr. Von Karma? Are you hiding evidence? Are, are you crooked? Uh, <clears throat> um, Miss Hart. Show the photo to the court. Show us the enlargement. Objection. The prosecution objects to the submission of this evidence. Uh, objection denied, obviously. Sit your ass down. Uh, the witness will show the enlargement to the court. Here, here, tears. Hmm. We still cannot see who is firing in this. Who is firing in this photo? It could be the defendant, or maybe it's not. Regardless, I'll accept this as evidence. Lake photo added to the court record. Happy now, Mr. Wright? Hmm. There has to be something. You ask for the enlargement? You got the enlargement. And little good it has done you, or any of us. That's why I requested she not to show it. Hmm. -mm. I suppose this means that the cross-examination is over, obviously. Quickly, end the case. Then I would like to close this cross-examination of Miss Lotterheart. And nothing too soon. That was a flagrant waste of my time. Mr. Von Karma, do you have anything to add? I stated everything I needed to when... I, I stated everything I needed to when this trial began. Decisive evidence. A decisive witness. What else could possibly be required? Nothing, of course. Then, I believe it is time for me to declare my verdict. But wait, it's not supposed to go like this. There has to be a clue in this photo, somewhere. This is bad, real bad. What should I do? See, object to the enlargement. No evidence, wait, it's never wait and see. Other evidence, let's see. Let's see what we have. <gasps> oh no! That's not what I meant to do. Wait, your honor, this evidence, I believe we have spent enough time talking about evidence. Hmm, indeed. We have heard opinions on every piece of evidence, but this enlargement... Uh, I see no point in retracing our steps. This is bad, real bad. What should I do? Okay, I didn't get a penalty for that. Uh, then the only thing left is object to the, to the enlargement. Your Honor... There is something decidedly strange with this enlargement. What? Well, what might that be? 
Mr. Wright, you will show the court what you mean. What about this photo is strange? Okay, here goes nothing. I'll show the judge what's strange about this photo. It's this, because they, they went to great lengths to say that the gun had fingerprints from Edgeworth's right hand, and this is a left hand. So, take that. Here, Your Honor. The shooter? I'm not sure I understand. What about the shooter is strange. Uh, look at the hand holding the pistol, Your Honor. The hand. That hand directly contradicts another piece of evidence. This man's left hand... This, this man's left hand does what? Let me show you. I'll show you the evidence that... Uh, I'll show you the evidence that left hand contradicts. Okay, see... Uh, right hand. Edgeworth's right hand. Take that. The evidence is clear. The man in this photo is holding the pistol in his left hand. However, the prints of the murder weapon were from Edgeworth's right hand. Ergo, the man shooting the pistol in this photograph is not Mr. Edgeworth. Clack, clack, clack. Hmm. Now that everyone in the courtroom has quieted down, I would like to reconvene this court of law. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. I have given us definitive... Uh, you have given us definitive proof that I seem to have forgotten which one of us is the attorney. Uh, we now know that it was not Mr. Edgeworth who fired the pistol that night. However, this leaves us with another rather large problem. If Mr. Edgeworth didn't do it, then who shot our victim? Precisely. As we have seen, there were no other people in the lake that night. But, uh, who but the defendant could have shot the victim? <laughs> Bisshart. I don't think so. Not Larry. Well, this is the obvious choice, then. The victim himself. There is only one explanation remaining. The man who shot the victim was none other, none other than the victim himself. Rubble, 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 rubble. Clack. Order, order! So, you are saying that the victim committed suicide? Yes, Your Honor. I can think of no other explanation. If that was the case, Edgeworth would have just told us. Hmm. Indeed, that does seem to be the... Uh, to be the only remaining option. Objection. I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. But suicide is out of the question. What? 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 An examination of the victim's wound reveals the distance at which he was shot. The distance? The victim was clearly shot from further away than a meter. A meter? That's three feet. Yes, thank you for... On behalf of our U.S. Uh, players. Uh, there is no way it could have been suicide. So we don't have meters here. Uh, order, order! Mr. Von Karma, are you sure of the accuracy accuracy of your data? Of course. I had already considered the possibility of suicide, you see. Autopsy report updated in the court record. He can just update the autopsy by himself? Hmm. I see. Clack. Very, uh, very strange. Uh, very well. Allow me to state my opinion. Considering the situation, the shoot... Uh, considering the situation, the shooter had to be the defendant, Mr. Edgeworth. However, the prints on the gun revealed that the shooter was not Mr. Edgeworth. This is a conundrum. Therefore, I would like to suspend proceedings for this trial uh, for the day. The court orders the defense and the prosecution to further investigate this matter. Understood. Yes, Your Honor. Mm. Well, that is all. The court is adjourned. Black. One fifteen p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number Two. Whew, that was a close one. Hey, don't you have anything to say? No, I have yet to be declared innocent, right? Well, yeah, but what happened out there on the lake, anyway? If he didn't commit suicide, then who? The shooter was about a meter away, too. What? Don't give me that look. 
I did not kill him. I was just kidding around. Hmm. Look, I'm going to go check. Oh, Phoenix is in here. I'm going to go check on, Ma on Maya. Oh, right. But tell her something for me. What? Tell, tell her to watch what she says in court. That's all. Would it kill you to just state how you really feel with a thanks, Edgeworth? I requisitioned a transcript of Lada's entire testimony. I thought it might give me some ammunition for the trial tomorrow. Of course, she didn't see the shooter, so the only part of her testimony that stood was the bang she heard. Lada's de deposition added to the court record. To be continued. All right. And I'm going to take another break, and uh, I'll come back for another session, and then I think I'll call it for the night, and then I'll pick this up on another uh, on another evening. So sit tight. I shall return.